Hello, Nancy. Here's some feedback on your logo, um, which is looking really good. It's going to be a tough choice, I think, uh, among the examples that you gave us. Know that, you know, you can alter your logo uh, throughout the class and that uh, these are just sketches. Um, and you also want to make sure that it is vector based. It may be, uh, I opened it up. I was unable to open it in Illustrator. I'll show you what that looks like in a bit. But anyway, great job so far. Good to meet you in virtual space. So here's uh, number one of the uh, <coughs> logo designs. And uh, I, I understand the play you know, on your last name here. Uh, is this vector, vector based? What is its source? It looks um, perhaps Pennsylvania Dutch or something, uh, cabinet painting. Um, this is an engraved typeface. It is from the uh, late 19th century, so it's appropriate. Um, and it has some of the same qualities as the lines in the uh, logo. Uh, let's see, moving down here to this. This is very nice. Uh, are these Thomas Buick engravings? Um, these two can be vector based. Uh, even something that has as much detail uh, as this can be vector based and should be vector based. What that means is that it, it's infinitely enlargeable uh, without any reduction in quality. Uh, the typeface, I understand that this is uh, one of the available typefaces, but it is overused. Um, and, I, you know, I, it, the quality of it is it goes well with this, but if you just find another typeface that has maybe this rusticated quality to it, um, and uh, it, it, it sort of, um, it's redolent of the 1980s. And it was used in some movie titles. Uh, I can do some research on that, but just know your typefaces. This is nice. This is also an engraved style typeface. Um, it looks like an adaptation of something from, oh, like a bookman, maybe from the late 19th century, also. And it looks uh, really well against this illustration of pigeons, which also seems to be from the same era. Now, but who is the illustrator of this? Uh, do you own this? Is this one of your uh, drawings? Um, you know, ownership of even the constituent parts of a logo like this um, is important to to pay attention to. Of the three, I think the first one I think is the most promising. But again, you know, make sure that uh, you own these illustrations and that they're not somebody else's work. I look forward to seeing how you apply color to this. Now, Nancy, when I tried to open your uh, PDF in Illustrator, hoping to get at some of these outlines, uh, I wasn't able to. Know that you can convert typefaces to outline file format. You can do that in Illustrator. That's probably uh, something a skill that you learned in a previous class. Anyway, it's prompting me for these illustrations. Um, here's what I get. Here is Courtney's from the same class, our class. And some of it is in vector base, like these uh, wonderful um, uh, let me cancel out of this. Wonderful uh, seahorses that she's drawn. And see how um, there's a lot of brush detail. Uh, so vector-based can really capture a lot of detail, and those engravings that you used uh, can also be vector-based. Um, you might want to do a little bit of research into that. Great job. Nancy, I see that this is, this is what you made, uh, what, in GRA 410, uh, I'm thinking. And, you know, it's all there. Whoops. It's all there. You've got a, a place for your photography. Um, maybe you might want to, you know, obviously incorporate whatever logo you have. I would make it large. Uh, you're tending towards something that's finely detailed, and that's fine. But you might want to make it large. Consider using it maybe perhaps subtly in the background. Um, and you'll find a place, I think, here to... May, uh, to include your branding suite. Um, maybe you'll make an appropriate heading up here. Uh, interesting article hmm, on ukiyo-e, floating world. Anyway, you have a setting. You have the beginning of a setting for your work and also for, the, in this class, the uh, branding suite. Good going.